This video demonstrates the installation and setup of LiftMaster Industrial DC Commercial Door Trolley Style Operator Model TDC. These products are not for residential use. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. The procedures demonstrated should only be performed by trained, professional installers and service technicians. Safe operation and servicing requires that you follow all instructions and safety advisories found in the manual. To locate a trained, professional installer or service technician, go to liftmaster.com slash locate a dealer. It's important to plan your installation. You'll need to know the door type, the door weight, and electrical rating of the circuit where the operator will be installed. The operator you select will be based on these details. Refer to the manual for the recommended configuration. Before you begin the installation, some site preparation will be required. This includes installation of power wiring and installation of separate conduit for power and data wires. Wiring must comply with national and local codes. For our demonstration, the facility has one 20 volt single phase power. For installations with 208 volt single or three phase power, we recommend converting the dedicated circuit to 120 volt single phase power. A working network connection is critical to getting over the air firmware updates and connecting to MyQ facility. It's important for you to contact the facility's IT team to obtain network details, including the Wi Fi network name and password. When you arrive on site for the installation, check the following. Check the movement of the door under tension. An improperly tensioned door may prevent the operator from functioning properly. Disable all locks on the door. Remove any ropes connected to the door. Plan to have a two-person team on site for this installation. Now, check the surface where the operator and header bracket will be mounted. Both locations must allow the operator and header bracket to be rigidly fastened to the structural support on the header wall or ceiling. Do not install over drywall. Concrete anchors must be used if mounting the header bracket or 2x4 into masonry. Let's take a closer look at the product. We'll start by looking at what is included in the TDC trolley operators. You'll find the power head assembly, the installation manual, caution labels, the antenna, the floor level wall controller which has an LCD display. You'll use this to set up the door and operator system. CPSU monitored entrapment protection devices and hardware box. Inside the hardware box you will find fasteners, track spacers, trolley, door arm assembly, front idler, header mounting bracket. Note, the tracks are shipped separately. Trolley chain will be shipped separate and will no longer be packed inside the operator packaging. We will also be demonstrating how to install the LC36 light curtain accessory. The light curtain includes light curtain transmitter and receiver, mounting brackets, light curtain shield, mounting hardware. The light curtain transmitter and receiver each have six feet of attached wire. The interior of the operator is accessed by loosening the screws on the cover. Removing the cover can make installation easier. Open the cover between 45 and 70 degrees and tap to remove. It is recommended to remove the knockouts for all wiring connections before mounting the operator. Be careful not to damage the components inside the case. Now, let's assemble the rail and attach the operator. To assemble the track, start by laying out the rails side by side. It's very helpful to use sawhorses. This 14-foot track is assembled with spacers, which need to be installed at even distances along the track. The idler is installed at the end of the track. Install the spacers with the plastic tab facing up using the provided bolts A and flange hex nuts B. Slide the threaded end through the hole on the trolley and secure with a lock washer D and another hex nut E. Slide the trolley onto the track with the take-up bolt pointing in the direction of the operator. At the door end of the track, attach the front idler to the second set of holes using the provided bolts F and lock washers D. Install a hex nut E onto the threaded take-up bolt C. 
Now attach the track to the operator using four bolts. It's helpful to have two sets of hands to get the track properly aligned. Be sure to follow the instructions in the manual for the style of operator you're installing. Slide the trolley onto the track. Remember to use gloves. Attach the chain to the take-up bolt using the master link. Use a clamp to keep the trolley in place so it doesn't move while you extend the chain to the operator. Wrap the chain around the drive sprocket. Once you wrap the chain around the drive sprocket, you won't be able to move it. Extend the chain and wrap it around the idler pulley. Be careful to ensure the chain doesn't become twisted. Bring the end of the chain back to the trolley. Lift the operator up to allow the chain to hang free. Attach the chain to the hole on the end of the trolley using a master link. You may need to exert some pressure to get the chain to reach, so that second set of hands will definitely help. The chain should sag about three inches below the track at the midpoint. Ensure the operator is lifted up to allow the chain to hang freely before adjusting tension. To adjust the chain tension, tighten the nut on the take-up bolt, then measure the amount of sag. Keep adjusting until the proper tension is achieved. Then, tighten the nut on the other side of the take-up bolt. You can make final adjustments to the chain tension once the operator is mounted in place. If necessary, remove links from the chain to achieve the proper tension. For safety, lift the power head from the sawhorse and rest the rail on the sawhorse. The trolley operator is generally mounted over the center of the door. Mark the header wall along the center line above the door. You may need to mount the operator off-center because of interfering structures or because of the location of the door, style, or top section support. If necessary, you may mount the operator up to 24 inches off-center on torsion spring doors. The header bracket attaches to the header wall at a location at least 4 inches above the highest point of travel of the door. The process for locating the header bracket is as follows. Raise the door so the top panel is at the highest point of travel. Use a level to mark this point on the wall. We have already marked the appropriate location for this demonstration. Because of the position of the torsion bar on this door, we have to place the header bracket about 10 inches above the high point of travel of the door. Choose a location that is appropriate to your installation. Next, attach the header bracket to the wall. The header bracket must be rigidly fastened to structural supports on the header wall or ceiling. If necessary, reinforce the wall with suitable mounting brackets to ensure adequate support. Warning: To prevent possible serious injury or death, header bracket must be rigidly fastened to the structural support on the header wall or ceiling. Otherwise, the door might not reverse when required. Do not install the header bracket over drywall. Concrete anchors must be used if mounting the header bracket or 2x4 into masonry. Never try to loosen, move, or adjust door, springs, cables, pulleys, brackets, or their hardware, all of which are under extreme tension. Always call an authorized service technician if door binds, sticks, or is out of balance. Raising the operator into position is definitely a two-person job. For doors over 10 feet tall, we recommend using a lift. See the manual for alternative options. Align the track with the header bracket. Insert the clevis pin through the holes in the header bracket and the holes in the front of the track and secure in place using the cotter pins. Now, hang the operator. Because we used a lift, the operator is conveniently positioned for making the needed connections. It must be securely fastened to structural supports of the building. If you're attaching to masonry, you must use concrete anchors. Additional support can be added along the track. Before we begin wiring the operator, make sure power is disconnected at the circuit breaker. Start with the door in the closed position. Power wiring should already be in place. Follow these steps to complete the wiring. 
Unscrew the cover screws and open the power head. Route the power wiring into the operator, then secure the conduit to the power head. There is a sticker covering the connectors for voltage selection. Remove it and put it to the side. Identify the connector for your application's voltage. For this demonstration, we are connecting to 120 volt single phase power. Plug the power selection wire harness into the connector. Make sure it is securely snapped into place. Cover the unused connector with the label. Locate the connectors labeled L1, L2, and ground. Plug the appropriate power wires to those connectors. No tools are needed when using the new Easy Push tab plugs. For the high voltage wiring, confirm the push tabs are locked in place before proceeding. The new wall controller features an LCD panel which provides access to the programming menu and other important status information. Make sure power is not connected or turned on before connecting the wall controller. To prevent possible serious injury or death from a closing door, install the wall controller within sight of the door, out of reach of small children, at a minimum height of 5 feet 1.5 meters above landings, steps, or any other adjacent walking surface away from all moving parts of the door. For this demonstration, we've had to install a plate so the wall control can be mounted to a structural support. Follow these steps to mount the wall controller. Measure and mark the surface at the appropriate height per regulatory requirements. Loosen the screws to remove the cover. Remove the knockouts from the mounting bracket. Attach the mounting bracket to the wall using hardware you will supply. Be sure to mount it with the correct end up. The mounting bracket has knockouts for conduit on the top and bottom. This allows you to pass wires through to the operator from other devices such as monitored entrapment protection devices. This is convenient for some applications but isn't necessary for this demonstration. You will need to supply wire for the wall controller. This wire needs to route down from the operator in conduit that is separate from high voltage power wiring. Use two conductor wire that is 14 to 22 gauge stranded or 12 to 22 gauge solid wire. Route the wire through the knockout and attach the conduit to the mounting bracket. We're connecting to pre-existing wiring routed from the operator and devices to this junction box. It's important to note the markings and colors of the wires you're splicing to. This will ensure the wiring connections at the operator are correct. Connect the wires to the terminals on the back of the wall controller. Polarity doesn't matter. Reattach the cover to the mounting bracket and tighten the screws. Attach a warning placard to the wall next to the wall controller. Follow these steps to connect the wall controller at the power head. Route the wires from the wall controller into the operator and connect the conduit. Locate the connector labeled wall controller. Plug in the wires from the wall controller. Polarity doesn't matter. Industrial commercial door operators are now supplied with CPSU monitored entrapment protection devices included in the box. You'll be supplied with mounting brackets with hardware, and a transmitter and receiver. The wires on the transmitter and receiver are short. You will have to supply wire that is 14 to 22 gauge stranded or 12 to 22 gauge solid wire. Route this wire through conduit that is separate from the power wiring conduit. Follow these steps to mount the CPSU devices. Assemble the mounting brackets using the provided hardware. Attach the transmitter and receiver to the brackets. Select a mounting location either on the wall or the floor. If mounting to the wall, measure and mark 6 inches above the floor. This is the height at which the devices must be installed. 
be sure to observe all warnings and advisements in the instruction sheet. Splice the wires from the transmitter and receiver to the wires running up to the operator. To simplify the wiring at the operator, we have the wires from each sensor routed into this junction box. We've twisted together the wires for the common connector. We've twisted together the wires for the edge eye connector. Each of these pairs is connected to a single wire that routes to the operator. Follow the steps to connect the CPSU devices at the power head. Make sure power is off to the operator. Route the wires from the CPSU devices into the operator. Locate the connectors for monitored devices. Twist together the wires for the edge eye connection. Twist together the wires for common. Plug the edge eye wires into edge eye. Plug the common wires into common. When maximum personal and property protection is needed, the monitored light curtain entrapment protection device forms a three-foot cross pattern of invisible light beams. Let's install the light curtain. Power should still be disconnected to the operator. Light curtains must be installed a minimum distance of 12 inches above the primary photoelectric sensors. We've already measured and pre-drilled mounting holes using wall anchors as appropriate. Assemble the light curtains to the mounting brackets with the provided hardware. You may need to adjust the connection, so don't tighten too much. Thread the mounting screws through the light curtain shield and bracket and loosely secure with the nylon locking nut. When installing more than one set of light curtains on adjacent doors, the provided shield must be attached. Make sure the lights on the light curtain are facing each other when you mount them to the mounting surface. Hold the light curtain up to the desired mounting location with the cable end pointed upward. Secure the bottom mounting bracket to the mounting surface. Make sure the light curtain is level, then secure the upper mounting bracket to the mounting surface. Tighten the screws to secure the light curtain to the mounting bracket. Secure the other light curtain to the opposite side of the door following the same steps. You will need to provide the wire that extends from each of the light curtains up to the operator. Do not run this wiring in the same conduit with power wiring. The receiving light curtain has four wires. Make a note of the colors of the wires you've spliced to from brown, blue, black, and white. On the other side of the door, the transmitting light curtain has two wires, brown and blue. Make sure to splice the same colored wires as you used for the brown and blue wires from the transmitter. Since this installation has all the wires routing to the operator through this junction box, we'll twist together the wires corresponding to light curtain brown. We'll twist together the wires corresponding to light curtain blue. Now we can splice to a single wire for each of brown, blue, white, and black. We've routed that wire up to the operator. At the operator, recall the wire colors we connected to. The standard light curtain wiring configuration at the power head is brown to aux 24 positive, blue to common negative, white to monitored common negative, and black to monitored eye edge 1 positive. If you needed to splice different color wires to reach the power head, take notes to ensure correct wiring configuration. For increased connectivity, the included antenna may be installed at the operator head. Simply screw on to the outside of the operator as seen here. Restore power to the operator. It's time to program the operator. These steps are necessary to complete the setup before using the operator. When the operator is powered on out of the box or after a factory reset, the wall controller will display the Quick Start Commissioning menu. This first time setup menu will guide you through each option that needs to be configured. To navigate through the programming menu, use the up and down arrow buttons to cycle between the options. Use the stop button to enter your selection. Choose the door type. Press enter to save. Choose the drum size. Choose drum size specific to your door application press enter to save. 
To set the open and close limits for the door position, as well as move the trolley into position to attach to the door, follow these steps. Confirm the door is in the closed position before setting door limits. Select Closed Limit. Move the door to the fully closed position to align with the door bracket, which will allow you to attach the trolley to the door. Then press Enter. Press Enter again to save. The door bracket mounts to the top panel of the door, except for solid wood doors. Many installations will require additional support for the door bracket. Secure it using suitable hardware that you must provide. The door arm has a curved arm and a straight arm that attach the trolley to the door bracket. The straight door arm has an open notch. This needs to face toward the door. Latch the straight arm onto the fixed pin on the trolley. Attach the curved arm to the door bracket with the curve pointing up. Align the mounting holes of the curved arm and the straight arm and bolt them together using the provided hardware. When finished, the door arm should be angled slightly toward the operator. A safety release rope is provided. This connects to the door arm. Please note, when using the emergency release rope to disconnect the door arm from the trolley, to prevent being struck by the door arm, do not stand under the rope or door arm. To disconnect the door from the operator, pull the emergency release handle straight down. Now that the door is attached, you can set your open limit. Select Open Limit. Press Enter. The display will show a number corresponding to the door position. Use the up and down arrows to move the door to the fully open position. Select Enter to confirm. Press Enter to save. The next option will be for Wi-Fi setup. Connecting to Wi-Fi is essential so the operator can receive over-the-air updates. This also lets you connect to MyQ facility to unlock the true power of facility access management. You will need to use a cell phone or tablet for these steps. A computer or laptop will not work. Get the network name and password ready. With Wi-Fi selected, press Enter. The display will show Learning Wi-Fi. On your mobile device, go to the Wi-Fi settings and search for Available Networks. Choose the network that matches the MyQ serial number on the operator. Once your mobile device connects to the operator, open a web browser. Enter the URL setup .myqdevice.com. Press Start. Choose the Wi-Fi network for the facility. Enter the network password. Tap Next. When the operator connects to Wi-Fi, select Yes. On the mobile device, the MyQ serial number will be displayed for confirmation. Save the MyQ serial number. You will need it later. When connected, the LCD will display signal bars. If the connection fails, there will be a slash through the Wi-Fi icon. If this happens, restart the pairing process. After the quick start setup is complete, the operator automatically learns which monitored entrapment devices are connected. The lights on the CPSU sensors will be lit. This is your opportunity to align the devices. Look at the transmitter and receiver. The green light on each should glow solid. If either or both lights are blinking, adjust the position of the devices until the lights glow solid. When the light curtain is properly wired and aligned, the amber and green LEDs will be on. The amber LED is located on the transmitter with the black strain relief cable. The green LED is located on the receiver with the red strain relief cable. The programming mode times out after 60 seconds of inactivity. To access the menus, press and hold the down arrow and stop button until the LCD goes blank, then release. From here, you have access to additional system and door information. To access system settings, select System Settings and press Enter. Use the up and down arrows to type in your password, pressing Enter each time. Press Enter again to confirm and be taken into System Settings. To unlearn devices that are connected, scroll to select Monitor Eye Edges. Press Enter. 
Select the eye edge input you are trying to remove. Press Enter. Select Unlearn. Press Enter. Select Save. Press Enter to confirm. By default, the safety buzzer will automatically sound when closing. If you wish to turn this off or back on if it is off, go to the wall control. Enter the programming menu. Press and hold the down arrow and stop button until the LCD goes blank, then release. Select System Settings. Press Enter. Press the down arrow until you select Buzzer Settings. Press Enter. Select either On or Off and press Enter. If you turn the buzzer on, it will beep three times to confirm it is on. Let's talk about operating modes. The operating mode you select will determine how the operator behaves under different conditions. Refer to the manual for descriptions of the different operating modes, also called wiring types. The default operating mode is C2, when no monitored entrapment protection devices are connected. Once you connect such a device, the next time you power the operator on, the operating mode automatically changes to B2 with no timer. An important feature to note is Timer to Close. Let's program Timer to Close. Follow the steps for entering programming mode. Select Operation Mode. Press Enter. Timer to Close determines the number of seconds the operator waits before automatically closing the door. To program Timer to Close, select B2. Press Enter. Use the up and down arrows to adjust the number of seconds. Press Enter. Press Enter to save. You'll be returned to the System Settings menu. Sometimes, for troubleshooting purposes, you may need to factory reset the operator. Enter Programming Mode. Use the down arrow to select Reset Factory Default. Press Enter. Select Save and press Enter to confirm. After a factory reset, you will need to select the door type and reprogram the limits. The operator is installed and ready to use. Be sure to watch our other videos about connecting to MyQ facility. Visit support.partner.liftmaster.com to learn more about how to get the most out of LiftMaster products with MyQ facility.